Introducing GeForce TV. GeForceTV.net is your new source for action overload. Featuring free live programming year-round and countless hours of on-demand video, GeForce TV will be your first stop whenever you want to see the latest and hottest racing action. See live Friday Night Excitement Weekly from Washington Speedway and watch the stars of tomorrow make a name for themselves during Thursday night's live micro-sprint racing. GeForce TV is also the new home for Rivals Race Chat. Watch weekly as Clinton Jeffrey and Adam Ross discuss all the hot topics in the world of motorsports. For iRacing fans, GeForce TV has you covered with hours of live broadcasting from rivals in GeForce TV racing leagues. GeForce TV promises to deliver motorsports, esports, and action sports you want to see, along with talk shows and vlogs to keep you connected to the lifestyle you love. Visit GeForceTV.net today to subscribe for free. Sit back, hold on, and feel the G's on GeForce TV. Time Watkins Glenn and a different voice. Yes, I know I am not Stephen Evans. I'm sorry I can't do the New York accents and I can't bother with the fantasticness that he brings to these broadcasts. But in his stead, while he is down in Daytona, uh, yours truly here is James Pike, uh, probably better known for the broadcast with Podium Esports and sometimes on the Irish Esports Network. But uh, Stephen and I go way, way back. So while he's vacationing down in Daytona, I am here with Brad to bring you coverage of tonight's race from Watkins Glen in Class B cars and uh, road course racing for the first time this season should be lots and lots of fun. We've got cars rolling, and it's showtime, right, Brad? It is. Thanks for joining us tonight, James. Uh, I I can tell you right now, I've given Steven so much crap for going Daytona the week that we're at Watkins Glen in our home track. But you know what? It's a pleasure to have you. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to see a lot of great racing tonight. I think we're just going to see a lot of great racing. Probably not a bad idea to roll through the starting grid, so... We'll go top to bottom and tell you where your favorite driver's starting, starting with the 26 of Trent Ringler. Then to his outside in P2 will be Guillaume Levesque. Bruno Pichette will start from P3 and P4 will be the 17 of Daniel de Blau. Will LaRue will start from the fifth spot. John Schweikert starts from sixth. Seventh will be Maddox Fiché. Kevin Ridley will roll off from eighth. Ninth will be Gerald Livingston. And Claude Ferland will start from tenth. James E. Smith Jr. rolls off from the 11th spot. 12th will be Sylvain Jolie. Van Hiver will start from the 13th spot. Dustin Ping will roll off from 14th. Michael Degore will start from 15th. 16th will be Matt Kubasik. Casey Sowich will start from 17th. Adam Ross rolls off from 18th. 19th will be Blair Wicket. And Jean Francois Poitra will start from 20th. Rick Scott, or Rick Scott will start 21st. 22nd will be Steve Ives. Callum McNichol will start from 23rd. Martin Davio will start from 24th. Maxime LaRouche will start from 28th. Behind a few folks, uh, Frank Gavari, GJ Boydell, and then the 85 of LaRouche will start 28th to round out your grid. Tonight's race will go for 30 laps around Watkins Glen International. It's the main course here. It's the one that we know from the NASCAR weekends, Brad, and 
uh, probably should just be a lot of really fun racing all around, I think. Yeah, I think this track is really going to give these guys a challenge with these new tire models. So uh, hopefully we'll take the first couple of laps easy, get uh, get through the S's, and we'll have some good racing. Yeah, the big question is whether or not these drivers will get through the S's in one piece. That's always the worry at a place like Watkins Glen. You just want to make sure that you survive and you keep yourself in one piece as everybody gets going and gets underway. Green flag is out for the Rivals Blacktop Series at Watkins Glen. And Ringler gets a pretty good run and takes off with not too much trouble at all. As he gets away about about a car length or two. And it looks like everybody's going to get through turn one all right, Brad. Up through the ashes they go. No issues whatsoever for your leaders. And not too much issues across the board for Ringler, Poussette, LaRue, De Blau, everybody. First side-by-side -side battle. You have to go all the way back to Gerald Livingston and Kevin Ridley and Maddox Shea. All their 6th, 7th, 8th as they come through the bus out for the first time. Not really too many battles a little bit further back. Everybody very well strung out, I think, in this field, in this race. But could see a battle for the lead momentarily because Pichet is closing up on Wrangler as we see what goes on with Kevin Ridley in that 20 machine. Been following Ridley for a little bit of this lap. He in the number seven machine working his way down the front stretch into turn one. Oh, as Ringler down into turn number one did something that's really easy to do in these cars. He locked up the left front, or excuse me, the right front. Allowed Bruno Percet to close in down the back Percet bumper. and Ringler still fighting one, two, and they've opened up the gap pretty significantly on third place. Will LaRue is about a second and change back of this battle for the race lead and has gapped himself a little bit to Daniel de Blau, who sits in the fourth spot. Number 17 machine, maybe about a second or so back, I would say. So the rest of this field is Ringler and Pichet go 1-2 through the carousel. Great battles. They come down the back stretch here. The long back stretch. Easy to come into turn number six here and slide the tires. You don't want to do that as Pichet comes through. They're going to come over here to turn number seven and head down the front stretch to the start finish. Yeah, Pichet there still just hanging as... Uh, we'll wait and see how things shake out for Wrigley and Pichette. Those two pretty well tied together. And then uh, De Blau starting to close in on LaRue just a little bit. Oh, big lockup, though, from De Blau, who's got damage to the right rear corner of his number 17 machine. I uh, wonder if he might have gotten into someone on that first lap. Didn't see it myself, but... We'll keep our eyes open and see if that affects the 17, especially on this back port, or back part of the racetrack, Brad. The long straightaway in that run down into the bus stop. You need a little bit of speed there, and if you've got anything that'll knock your aerodynamics out of whack, then you could be in big trouble. You could give up, you know, two, three, four, or five car lengths as you get down to the show. As Ringler goes around coming out of the bus stop and has just absolutely torn the front of these number 26 all to pieces, we'll take a look and see what happened and he just got loose just missed the curb coming out of the bus stop and got in the fence so all of a sudden it is now Bruno Pichette who has about a two second lead over Will LaRue for second and going back to Daniel uh, De Blau. I think it was Kyle Busch who made the statement that Watkins Glen is one of those. It's a road course, but it's a high-speed road course. So I'm with you, uh, James. I'm going to see if that damage on the back of that car is going to handle, affect the handling or, you know, just the downforce with that spoiler being hiked up in the air. Uh, that may be a big disadvantage for him. We'll see if it does or does it. In the meantime, though, good battle with the one of John Schweikert, who Drops right down to the inside of the bunch stop, and De Blau won't contest it at all. So Schweikert now up into P3. De Blau back to fourth. Next in line would be the 23 of Maddox Richet, who is not terribly far off. But De Blau, maybe not quite done yet. 
certainly giving Schreiker some pressure as they exit the carousel. about Pichet, by the way, who's out in front by almost two, now three seconds over the room. And then that first good battle, I, I think I think we definitely hit on something with the Blouser in because Richet all of a sudden is within maybe about call it a car length or two or three. And, and this is a pretty good pack right through here. You've got Dublin, Richet, Kevin Ridley, Gerald Livingston, Claude Ferland, Savan Joly, all right in there. And they're all within about maybe a second or two of each other. Manix Roche, he actually picked up one of our uh, practice races uh, leading up to the season. With a, oh, there goes John Schweikart through the bus stop. I'm going to guess he uh, overshot the bus stop there. And that stacked up everybody. There's the Blauig is past. Roche is there. Ridley is there. Livingston is there. All pretty much now within maybe 10 car lengths, and that's about five or six cars, all battling for position from about third on back. And John Schweikart, he just can't catch a break here with the Rivals Blacktop Series leading the race last week or excuse me two weeks ago over live on the air here and just lost it off turn four uh, John Schweikart's looking for some luck if anybody's got any extra anybody have a golden horseshoe of some form Brad maybe maybe we might be able to get him one I think John Schweikart would pay some pretty good money for that right now I have a feeling you're probably right about that <laughs> As, um, to his great credit we see some cars uh, merging out of pit road, some early pit stops from some of the drivers a little bit further back in the field. In the meantime, though, the Blau has stepped it out on Riche. And now Riche has to worry about the group of Ridley and Livingston and Jolie all right back there, fifth, sixth, seventh, just sort of laying in the weeds as Livingston now goes to the outside of Ridley to try and get fifth. Heavy down into the braking here into the bus stop. You don't want to overdrive it like Roche, or excuse me, like Schweikart has. As they come down into the carousel, you hear him downshift off the carousel, down the long back straightaway. Now he's got to see if he can catch Ridley, try and make a move going down the front stretch into turn number one. All sorts of stuff all over the place here. Is Roche now trying to chase Dublau. That gap has come down a little bit, so it's sort of yo-yo between those two. Wait and see what lap times looked like as they crossed the stripe, but they were within three tenths of a second that last time by when they were completing lap five, and as they complete lap six to go to lap seven and bring us towards the one third of the waypoint in this race, it was Riche who was quicker by about a tenth on Dublau. So, but little wiggle there from Riche coming out of turn one, so now Ridley all over the rear bumper of the 23 as they come up the hill through the S's. We're going to ride on board the Custom Works RC on board with Kevin Ridley down the back straightaway. Let's see if he can catch Riche going into the bus stop. So they're going to come heavy onto the brakes, hit the curb, set the car, down into the carousel we go. And you just sort of ride the throttle throughout a lot of the carousel. It's it's. It's reminiscent of Road America. It's also, I think, trickier than Road America because of the elevation changes. That's something that I think a lot of people tend to forget here, that you're working with all that speed that you try and build up onto the second morning straightaway as you work your way back towards the start-finish line at Watkins Glen. And that can definitely trip a few people up. But in the meantime, really good battle here with Ridley and Livingston. But now Ridley's going to come down to pit road, so Livingston will take over fifth. Duché will go to fourth, the Blount third, and then it's still... Uh, Pichette and LaRue, who are clear. Everybody, although Pichette really putting on the show now, and DeBlau really way, way back there, where LaRue has got about seven seconds on DeBlau. Uh, that you got between second and third as it stands. Sort of watching these drivers come through and work their way up through 
the upper part of this course and also keeping an eye out for battles soon. Uh, you've got uh, Riche and Livingston that are within a second of one another, also a little bit further back. You've got Casey Sowench and Ivan Iber within about maybe two, three car lengths of one another as well. Same can be said for Matt Kubasek and Guillaume Levesque who are right on top of each other actually as Levesque is able to clear Kubasek and go up to ninth coming out of the carousel. So one more spot for the 13 who uh, continues to march up the field after a, a tricky first lap. He started in second and currently now runs in the ninth spot. So trying to get back to where he was certainly has a lot of pace in that car though. Just ahead of them going side by side down into turn number one, Casey Sowich and Gillian Levesque. Levesque's going to give Sowich the spot. At least for the moment. <laughs> we'll, we'll see whether or not it actually holds, but it gives us the opportunity to uh, just wait and see who does what here. Is. And Riche and Livingston now currently the best battle on track. That's fourth and fifth. That's within about a second here. Both these drivers working their way out of the carousel and currently pushing on into turn seven, turn eight, that final complex there, Brad, before they come back to the start finish line, which seems like it would be easy given the layout, but can be far, far trickier than initially suspected. It is, it is really easy to overjudge turn number seven coming off the corner there. You really want to try and swing out to the curb to carry as much momentum down the front straightaway as you can. And then, of course, coming downhill into turn number one, it is so easy to lock up. Not only lock up, but you get the wheel hop. A lot. A big thing I think we're going to be talking about today is wheel hop around Watkins Glen. It's so easy to do, and it is so hard to correct. I'm really impressed with these guys right now. We're 10 laps in out of 30. And they're really seeming to handle it well. Everybody seems like they're doing a decent job of things. Pichette, especially, he was ahead of the room by about, call it three seconds now flat. Now, uh, Riche has managed to clear Livingston. So, Riche now up into fourth, trying to chase after DeBlau, who would be next in line. So, Manic Riche, uh, I don't know. Do, do, I would think you all would have some sort of mad manix jokes so some of those are mad max jokes in there right i would think i'm sure steven's got something up his sleeve he likes hiding he likes the cookie jar he likes hiding the cookie jar as manix roche is going to head down and hit pit road um perfect timing right oh yeah up top hiding i mean there's no cushion here tonight but uh up top on the cushion where Mama likes to hide the cookies and down on the bottom where Mama likes to hide the rum. He's got all sorts of things. Uh, wouldn't be ovens, wouldn't be Steve in particular uh, without all sorts of fantastic sayings like that. So uh, all in the hands of Pichette now because LaRue has come down pit road for service for the first time and is off and away. So uh, we'll keep an eye and see what the gap is between the 227 and the 55 once they come out of pit road and finish off things but as it stands this is the bruno pichette show and uh, then it's the blah livingston working their way through a little bit of lap traffic uh, not too much and and how about casey sowich coming all the way from the 17th spot now currently running in the fourth position on the racetrack as we have completed 10 laps of 30 so a third of the way home in tonight's rivals blank top series race watkins glenn as your race leader, Bruno Pichette, finally brings it down to the pit road. He's going to come down 35 miles an hour to his pit stall. Pichette has now come down to pit road for service for the first time. So the 227 into his box and sliding very nightly, or nicely, very neatly into the stall. And he'll get, we would think, somewhere in the ballpark about 14 seconds of service and then jump back out on pit road as... The 227 continues to get service now as out and away. You see DeBlau come in right behind him, right in that next pit stall. So uh, some of the leaders coming in, that leaves four cars left to pit outside of uh, Pichette who just came down pit road. And incidentally, all of them are on pit road now. So Pichette 
uh, sort of the Pied Piper in all this, leading everybody back around. And uh, LaRue definitely has cut into Pichette's lead a little bit. It's about two seconds down from the three that it was before they came down pit road for stops. But still Bruno Pichette in control of this race, then LaRue, then Richet and Livingston, third and fourth, and Ridley and DeBlau now in fifth and sixth. That's where DeBlau is following after the pit stops. He came in a little bit later than everyone else and cycled back there. So we get to be treated to what should be a pretty good battle, I think, Brad, between DeBlau and then the 20 of Kevin Ridley. Yeah, Kevin's been Ridley. Kevin Ridley has been strong on the series here. They do a lot of work with these B cars. Uh, practicing during the week and kevin's just obviously being a wheel man himself he's usually always strong everywhere we go and on the road courses too i think that's an important thing to note just because it's it's such a different kind of racing that you see from a lot of the tracks that you go to when you go oval racing on i racing and it requires a different style of driving so if you've got the ability to be strong on the short tracks and the super speedways the mile and a half you can do it on all of these fantastic road courses too then clearly you've got some form of talent saw so DeBlau slide up just a little bit there in one, so I think he lost a little bit of traction and went way, way back there. And now uh, Ridley and Livingston are uh, next up ahead for the 17 on the pylon, but pretty big gaps all around. Uh, actually, best battle now way up the top is probably uh, Maddox Richet and Livingston. That's about a second in change. And you can see uh, Richet working through some of the traffic up at the top end of the carousel and now Livingston going to have to work through the same traffic as they come through the second straightaway. That's Monson W.O. in the 81 machine that they have just gotten around to get through uh, what was 11 and 12 back in the day, what I guess count as 9 and 10 or I'm, wherever these turns have stuck themselves after they uh, sort of renumbered the layout a few years ago. Now walk in through. We're going to take a moment to go to commercial, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, more racing from the Glen. You're watching the Rivals Blacktop Series from Watkins Glen International. GeForce TV. GeForceTV.net is your new source for action overload. Featuring free live programming year-round and countless hours of on-demand video, GeForce TV will be your first stop whenever you want to see the latest and hottest racing action. See live Friday Night Excitement Weekly from Washington Speedway and watch the stars of tomorrow make a name for themselves during Thursday night's live micro sprint racing. GeForce TV is also the new home for Rivals Race Chat. Watch weekly as Clinton Jeffrey and Adam Ross discuss all the hot topics in the world of motorsports. For iRacing fans, GeForce TV has you covered with hours of live broadcasting from rivals in GeForce TV racing leagues. GeForce TV promises to deliver motorsports, esports, and action sports you want to see, along with talk shows and vlogs to keep you connected to the lifestyle you love. Visit GeForceTV.net today to subscribe for free. Sit back, hold on, and feel the G's on GeForce TV. To the rivals Blacktop or Black Top series from Watkins Glen, where Bruno Pichette is in control of this field and doesn't really have much competition to be fair. Out in front of Will LaRue by five seconds and out in front of Monix Richet in third by 17. Although, pretty good battle with Richet and Gerald Livingston in the third and fourth spots. We've talked about them a few times already, Brad, and these two. Much like a lot of these drivers in the back half of the top five, just seem like they can't get unglued from one another. 
Yeah, it, I think it's really easy to overdrive when you're trying to focus on the guys in fr uh, guys around you and behind you versus trying to focus on what's in front of you. And a racetrack here like Watkins Glen, if you're doing that, you're just not going to go anywhere. Because you overdrive and you end up making mistakes like we saw from a lot of folks, I think. Uh, Trent Ringler in particular, right at the beginning of this race, ends up getting it on the exit of the bus stop two or three very early on and still has not managed to climb back up the pile and all that much he's only up to 12. Uh, same thing for Gil Levesque who started in second and ran into trouble early he's still 16th on the board not really much going on on that front for either of those two so very valid point there I think Brad and that you do almost have to race the track more than you do the other cars around you and just Try and keep everything clean. Make sure you don't make mistakes. And then once you do that, you, you should, should in theory, be in decent shape to make sure you don't end up in trouble. He's, he's, he's shit still wheeling his way around and we'll sort of bounce around to see if there are any other good battles on track. Uh, Casey Sowich and Adam Ross together and nose to tail, 14th and 15th as it stands. And then uh, you've got uh, Michelle Liguri and Ivan Bear. 8th and 9th, or 9th and 8th, respectively. We ought to be technical within a second of one another as well, but Boucher and Livingston, the big battle to watch, 3rd and 4th, and that's within 4 tenths. That's the closest battle on the track at the moment. They're going to head down into the bus stop here. Rache on the curbs, Livingston on the curbs, both clean out of the bus stop into the carousel. Livingston just a little wide coming out of the corner. He's going to lose just a little bit coming through the carousel. See if he can make that up and get a big run on him. Try and get that run into turn number six. Would be interesting if he could manage to pull it off. But as it stands, it is still Riche in control of third. And Livingston still in line to just nip everybody else for fourth. If, if he can't get around Riche. But I have a hunch those two will go back and forth. And hammer and tong until we take the checkered flag and about 13 laps. Remember, we have left on the board to knock out here at Watkins. Glen does that work lap 18 of 30? As you saw there, going down into turn number one, it looks like Rache is having some issues locking the front up going into turn number one. Uh, hopefully, that's not going to turn into an issue with him as that allows Livingston to close right up through the fast S's here. Livingston's got it down to three tenths of a second in closing. And we'll see what kind of run he gets coming into the bus stop or the inner loop, depending on how you see it, how you want to call it. But just wait and see how they play it and how they run off the curves and make sure they survive in one piece. But everybody all nose to tail and mining their P's and Q's up here. Not really too many issues. But also, have known another battle here that's gotten good all of a sudden. How about Daniel DeBlanc and Sylvain Jolie in sixth and seventh? Jolie with all the momentum, trying to close on DeBlanc, who's working his way around lap traffic. And now here comes Jolie to the inside of the 17. He didn't quite get the run off the carousel that he wanted, though. So Jolie will have to gather it back up and try one more time to jump around the 17. Yeah, it really seems like the uh, damage that DeBlau had hasn't hurt him too bad here so far. Still able to hold a competitive line here and keep Jolie behind him not all that crazy but it won't matter because the blind will come down to pit road for his yeah yeah just get the get out of the way mode and make sure he doesn't end up in trouble so that moves jolie up into the sixth spot and he will try and chase down kevin ridley who's about seven seconds up the road and that also means that the big battle on track actually will be the gurry and Ibert. those two side by side is the 19 machine goes to the inside. The 20 rides the outside, and it's Iber who will try and run the Liguri at least for the moment. We'll see what kind of run they get up the S's there. Well, we had one car sideways on the back stretch. Wow. Iber had to cut it to the grass to get around the car that was sideways in the back stretch. Lucky to keep that car under control. Oh, big incident for Liguri. Locked it up on the exit of the inner loop and smacked the tire barrier coming into the carousel. So that'll end that battle pretty quickly between the 19 and the 24. 
see if that had to do any kind of significant damage to that car. That was a pretty hard hit to the tire barrier. Those tire barriers are not forgiving here at Watkins Glen International. Mm -hmm. Big hit for Liguria. I think the good thing for him is that uh, not really much company in terms of traffic. Dustin Ping is the next driver up the road in Liguria. Uh, I believe, yeah, immediately we'll just bring it down pit road and get service, I think. Swing back to the front of the field here with Mannix Roche and Jared Livingston having a great battle here through the bus stop down into the carousel. Really good stuff from these two. It's just been really competitive, really, really tough, really, really impressive racing all the way around. Roche continues to pace Livingston, but he has not been able to shake him. Livingston is held tight, and they were within a tenth of a second the last time by as far as lap times go. So very even battle between the 23 and the 65 for second and third in this race that's really a battle to watch because Bruno Pichet has run off the front as Riche comes down pit road for service yeah James I think that's one of the things I like the most about Watkins Glen seems like riche has got a stronger car through the front half of the course through turn one up through the yeses and then Livingston's really able to catch him and pull back to him through the bus stop and through the carousel down the back stretch. Almost leads me to believe, oh, Riche had to back it up in his pit stall a little bit. He missed the entrance of his pit stall ever so slightly. So that's time he's going to lose. And that could be very, very crucial in his battle with Livingston. So. Intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. Also, no, Livingston for the moment is actually the leader, but that's also because Pichette has already come down pit road a second time. Livingston still will have to pit at least one more time before this race concludes in 10 laps. But uh, at least for now, 65 is in control of the race. Let's see if he makes the hard right-hander off of turn number seven here to hit pit road. And he doesn't. He's going to stay on for another lap. Well, hang out and wait. Pichette is about 12 seconds back of Livingston for the race lead. And then you got to go a ways to find battles now. Everybody's just strung out since we're in the dead center of a pit cycle here. Although I can tell you that of the drivers that are on the lead lap, it's Livingston, Jolie, and DeBlau who have yet to come down pit road for their second stop. Everybody else already has two stops under their belt, and I would imagine would be good to go until the end of this race. Also, note Pichette was chopped off about a second of the lead on the 65. You'd imagine that'd be the case given that Livingston's got 10 lap old tires compared to Pichette's brand new tires, but still something to note, I think, nonetheless, especially when Livingston tries to somehow stretch this all the way. Down into turn number six, he's going to come up to turn number seven. He is going to make the hard right hander to hit pit road. So there's the answer. Livingston comes down to pit road on the end of lap 22, beginning on lap 23. You should, in turn, see Bruno Pichette jump ahead of Livingston. And here's the 227 coming right across the start finish line now. And Pichette back in control of this race on lap 23 of 30. And the question will be how far will Livingston fall once he comes back out on the track? Will LaRue is cleared and waiting on Sylvain Jolie. Jolie will come down pit road. Manex Riche is next in line. And the 23 machine is going to stay out on the racetrack. So uh, Riche may jump out. Could be one of those cases where Riche and Livingston jump out right on top of one another. It'll be close. Livingston out of pit road. Riche now into turn one. It'll be tight. But Livingston is able to jump out ahead of Riche by about two seconds. So Livingston to third, Riche to fourth. As we take a look at back at uh, second place, William LaRue, strong competitor here with the Rivals Asphalt or Black Tie Series, excuse me. Both members of the LaRue racing team. And he's got a couple of lap cars between him and Pichette, but let's see if he can try and claw him in and 
put up a battle here with about seven laps to go here at the line. That gap is largely extended over the course of this race. It was about two seconds, some 10 laps to go. It's now about four seconds and change, almost four and a half as LaRue enters turn one. So Pichette has even extended on his closest competition. And then big gap from LaRue to Livingston. It's about 19 seconds from the 55 to the 65. And everybody pretty well strung out beyond there. Although a good battle brewing. A little bit further back, Yon Levesque and Matt Kubasik in 14th and 15th. Those two pretty close to one another. And then uh, Sylvain Jolie trying to catch Kevin Ridley in the 20 machine. Same for Michel Ligori and Trent Ringler, who are 9th and 10th. And now Ligori beginning to put pressure on the 26 as they work through the final corner and come back onto the front stretch. Ringler with a 26 that damage from earlier in the bus stop gives the position of the glory you've got to think Ringler after such a strong start to the race just trying to pace it around trying to finish the race salvage what he can out of the day all right all fair but just all I think very disappointed given the qualifying and get, given the pace that he had he was the only driver besides Guillaume Levesque in the the 112s in qualifying had plenty of pace so uh, he'll, he'll be happy to get the top 10 i think if he can maintain it for these final few laps but i have to believe it's going to be a disappointment for Wrigley to not be able to come home with the victory or even a top five for that matter Not much to be said, though, amongst battles within the top 10 at this point. So now that Liguria has cleared Ringler and is off and away by a pretty good margin, uh, it is really only Livingston and Riche that are within about a second or two of one another. Uh, Dustin Ping trying to catch up to Ringler, too. And Liguri now racing and trying to catch up with Iber. Those two we've called names for. And that actually is the best battle within the group of cars in the lead lap. It's uh, Liguri with plenty of pace and even on the lap older tires running down Iber as they work their way up the top side of this racetrack into the inner loop. We'll take one more pause here and take a commercial break and then be back with the finish. Rivals Black Top Series from Watkins Glen here on G4 TV. GeForce TV. GeForceTV.net is your new source for action overload. Featuring free live programming year-round and countless hours of on-demand video, GeForce TV will be your first stop whenever you want to see the latest and hottest racing action. See live Friday Night Excitement Weekly from Washington Speedway and watch the stars of tomorrow make a name for themselves during Thursday night's live micro-sprint racing. GeForce TV is also the new home for Rivals Race Chat. Watch weekly as Clinton Jeffrey and Adam Ross discuss all the hot topics in the world of motorsports. For iRacing fans, GeForce TV has you covered with hours of live broadcasting from rivals in GeForce TV racing leagues. GeForce TV promises to deliver motorsports, esports, and action sports you want to see, along with talk shows and vlogs to keep you connected to the lifestyle you love. Visit GeForceTV.net today to subscribe for free. Sit back, hold on, and feel the genes on GeForce TV.
Welcome back to coverage of the Rivals Black Top Series from Watkins Glen International here on G4 TV. Buda Pochette now with three laps left to claim this victory and make it a LaRue Racing Team 1 2 because Will LaRue sits in second at the moment. And the 227 and 55 have been the stoutest cars in this field by a decent margin throughout this race. Just trying to finish off everything and bring it home here in the final few laps. Not really too many battles to speak of amongst our time group as well. Maybe Ringler and Liguri, ninth and 10th, those two still nose to tail. So I'm wondering if Ringler might have been able to follow Liguri and potentially pick up a few tricks and figure out where he is running on this track and figure out some of the line of the 24. But as it stands, it's Liguri who has the spot, Ringler who wants it. Now only three more laps for these drivers to figure out who's going to take it off. And two now because Bichette comes across the start finish line he'll get the white flag next time by it's such dominating performance by Bruno Bichette tonight got I think he got can we say he got lucky with the uh the unfortunate incidents with Ringler and in the struggles through the inner loop today but uh there's no doubt Bruno Pichette has been on top of his Watkins Glen game here. I don't think anybody's had anything for him all day. Not a surprise, you know, and I, I think to be fair, it's you give him credit for not doing anything to tear the car up either. I, I don't doubt that Ringler has the pace and the speed, but part of the battle, especially in road courses, is making sure that you don't tear your own equipment up. And that's exactly what, what Pichette's managed to avoid. He's been clean, he's been consistent, he's been quick the entire way through this race and is now maybe a lap and change away from a very well-deserved victory in the Rivals Black Town Series at Watkins Glen as he makes his way through the final corner for the next to last time. We'll come back on, onto the front stretch and it'll be Pichette who comes down to the start finish line and will take the white flag. One lap to go for Pichette to claim victory at Watkins Glen. Still a really good battle a little bit further back between Liguri and Ringler. These two actually right ahead of Pichette on the racetrack. They're not terribly far away. So we'll sort of be able to jump around and see what's up with this group. It's Liguri and Ringler and Pichette. Pichette incidentally will be looking to lap Ringler next. He's the next car on the racetrack. There's a lap car in between this group. It's the 43 of Claude Fallon, but all 24, 26, and then the 227 on this final lap. Oh, big dive there from the 26 to try and get to the 24. And then he bounced off the curb and it completely ruined his run off the corner. And that might be it. That might secure Michel Liguri's ninth place run tonight. And now it's all about Bruno Pichet. The 227 machine doing nothing but dominate today at Watkins Glen. And Pichet will work his way around the lap car of Ferlan, come through the final corner, stick it right there on that concrete strip, drive up the corner, and Bruno Pichette will win the Rivals Black Top Series race at Watkins Glen International. Will LaRue comes home in second, waiting on Gerald Livingston to round out the podium. He's next in line, and he's got four seconds over Monix Richet. So the 65 in a very good place. He'll come out of the corner, off, and into third very cleanly. So Livingston comes home in third. Richet will follow closely behind in the fourth spot. And it will be Ridley who comes home in the fifth position as he comes off the final corner and drives across the start-finish line to complete his race. Jolie will come home in the sixth spot. Seventh will be Daniel Duplau waiting for Ivan Bear and Michel Liguri. Pretty good battle between these two to try and figure out who's going to take the eighth spot. Liguri with the look comes through the corner, 
Drives over the curve, gets on the grass a little bit, gets it a little bit loose, nearly ends up in trouble. Almost opens the door for Ringler to get back at it. Pretty good battle here for third, and Ringler and Liguri will go side by side for position, but it will be Liguri who beats out Ringler and Iber that beats out both of them. They came through about one, two, three across the start finish line, but Iber gets eighth, Liguri ninth, and Ringler tenth. And that's is all the cars i think they're finished on the lead lap everybody else about a lap down so we can turn our attention at least for a little bit to watch the 227 burn it down on the front stretch and as bruno burns it down on the front stretch you see results on your screen and Really, really good run for Pichette. No surprise, though. You've got two Class A drivers in the top three and a really impressive run for Will LaVue, who only has the rookie of a license, but plenty of speed, Brad. I think plenty of experience, and I have a feeling he'll be jumping up to a blue stripe in relatively short order. Yeah, absolutely. For To come into Watkins Glen and have that good of a race like that, that's, that's really saying a lot about a driver's ability. She has a ton about his driver's ability. So there's a ton about what you can do and, and what sort of ability you have. Wait and see We're if gonna we work can... on getting some uh, some guys up here for you. Wait and see if we can get a few folks up in here. First, I figure we, we've got a Bruno Pichette to speak to. He's, he's got to be the first guy with all, all the dominating that he did. But Bruno and Will, and we'll see if we can get Gerald Livingston up here as well as everybody uh, is just about ready to go. And uh, we'll get set to bring in your top three finishers momentarily. We start with third place, Jerry Livingston in the 65 machine. And, and Jerry, just a, a really consistent race, I thought, from everybody in the top three. But you had fun because you got to battle with Mannix for a good chunk of the race. So what was it like just racing around the 23 and, and navigating your 65 around walking split. All right. I just got to find the right button here. Yeah, I know I've raced with these guys a long time. Uh, they're all awesome guys to race with. And thank you to Martin and Ross and everybody that uh, puts this on. Uh, yeah, no, I'm used to all these guys. What was it like for you just piloting the car around Watkins Glen? What what kind of challenges does this track present to a driver? You just got to lift early and get off the corners. Uh, you know, it's slippery, so you got to just take your time, save your tires. And what sort of momentum do you carry from your top three finish into next week? Oh, that's oval, so... Uh, we'll see. Uh, I usually just run a fixed setup, so I, you know, I got to wait for, uh, attrition to move up through the field most of the time. Well, Jerry, as, as always, we'll give you an opportunity to say thank you to everybody who makes it happen. So who, who do you need to thank for your top three finish tonight? Oh, just everybody, the league, uh, the rivals league and, Martin and Ross and everybody else that uh, manages it and the sponsors. Uh, and I want, you know, and all the guys that I race with, they, they, they've been awesome for years. Thank you very much. And too bad for Trent there. I don't know what happened to him, but he was really hot there at the beginning. Well, Jerry, congratulations on your third place run tonight and best of luck. See you next week. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, thank you, guys. Have a good night. Jerry Livingston, who comes home P3. Next up, Will LaRue, who comes home P2. And, uh, Will, you you and Bruno were pretty much in your own zip code for the whole race. So uh, how easy was it just to, to get into a rhythm and a groove and try and figure out how to navigate this track? Yeah, I just, uh, I mean, I just went conservative and didn't throw my, uh, my corners away. Just kept going conservative each corner and get that on the track and that's the way to go I guess. the easiest way to get around here and uh top two finish here podium interview on 
uh, GeForce TV. You know, how much fun is it to get the chance to to be up here and chat and be a part of all the madness on the broadcast? It's always a good fun. It's always a lot of fun. I mean, um, yeah, you guys do a great job on the podcast. Uh, it's uh, I can't wait to watch it. And Will, who do you need to thank for your top two run tonight here at Watkins Glen? Uh, I got to thank uh, a bit of Bruno and a bit of John Schweikart. Uh, I don't know what happened to John. He he got a little bit of damage, and I think he heated. His engine was heating up, so too bad. But, yeah, John did a pretty good set with Bruno that tuned it a little bit and got the P2. Well, congratulations on your second place finish, and thanks as always for taking the time to talk to us. No problem. Thanks. Will LaRue comes on P2, and now to your winner in victory lane, Bruno Pichette. And Bruno, just a, a dominance, I think, is only the half of it. There might have been one lap that you didn't get the chance to lead, and then Trent goes around in the inner loop, and, and you take over and just roll off. Uh, how much does prior experience here in this car help at a place like Watkins Glen, especially compared to some of the other tracks on the Black Top Series schedule? Yeah, but I, I'm a I'm a road racer primarily, so uh, that's helped me uh, on the road course with the NASCAR, and uh, uh, I did uh, the last three years a lot of road only road uh, course uh, uh, with the NASCAR B and A. So it's uh, I'm very uh, familiar with the with the car. How does the uh, how how do the class A and the class B cars compare to each other, especially at a place like this? And and how do they compare when you drive them? Uh, you mean with the the, the front of the B and the A? Yeah, the the cup car and then the Xfinity. Oh, car, the yes. cup car, yes. Yeah. Uh, w with the new uh, the new version of the tire, the V set, the V seven, uh, they look very the same. Uh, the, the the cup car is just a little bit more powerful, and uh, you you have to be uh, very uh, softness with the with the throttle, but uh, the, the 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 Xfinities look the same. So. Uh, on the bad stretch, uh, uh, the last uh, before the update, uh, we can uh, go uh, the throttle wide open, but uh, not now. We have to manage the throttle and the brake uh, more uh, with, with more. Uh, I don't know how to say, but we have to be uh, gently with it. Careful would be the word, I think. So. Uh... <laughs> A tremendous, tremendous run tonight, Bruno. Uh, who do you need to thank for making it possible and getting you to victory lane? I'm sorry? Who who do you need to say thank you to for winning tonight's oh, race? Yes, uh, by, uh, the team that root is, uh, is the best team uh, on the on this season, I think. And uh, we are powerful on every, uh, every track, uh, oval or on the road so uh, i think this is the the team you have to beat this year so uh la rue martin davio will larry john schwickard everybody over at la rue making things happen you get a one-two yes. finish with them too so bruno congratulations on your victory tonight and a big thanks to you for coming in and taking the time to speak with us thanks a lot uh, have a good time Bruno Pichette, P1 tonight, Brad Ovens. And if you want to learn how to run this racetrack at a Class B car, just watch what he did for 30 laps. He'll pick up everything you need to know because he was untouchable in that 227. Such an impressive run here at Watkins Glen. Kind of reminds me of a Kyle Busch-esque and maybe even a Chase Elliott-esque. He seems to have this place figured out pretty good. But uh, just to... Uh, a class act here with LaRue Racing. And a class performance from them. One, two. Really, really big stuff all the way around for everybody at LaRue Racing, LaRue Motorsports. So, 
It's Bruno who takes care of business at Watkins Glen. Brad, I, I think we've got everything covered that we need to over the night. I don't know. Is there any other surprises that we need to know about that you might not know or that you know and I don't? None that I'm aware of, uh, unless they pop up. I'm just happy to say that my computer is happy and healthy right now. We've been having some PC issues, but uh, I don't think I've seen over a 60% usage on the CPU all night. So uh, we're going to call this a victory. We're going to go celebrate with Bruno, and we're going to have a good time tonight. I like that thought. Big thanks to Brad and everybody at the Rivals Black Tom Series for making it happen and bringing me in. I had a great time tonight. Look forward to keeping an eye on uh, everything that goes on with this series in the future. Also, uh, I'd be remiss not to plug uh, Putty of Esports, and if you want to get the chance to check out some of what we do, twitch.tv forward slash Putty of Esports there as well if you ever want a chance to see some other swarms of action from the Cars Tour, the Porsche Club of America, so on and so forth. That's where my normal home will be, but We'll go ahead and wrap up this broadcast on G4 CV with the Rivals Blacktop Series from Watkins Glen International. Thank you all so much for watching, and good night to you all. GeForce TV. GeForceTV.net is your new source for action overload. Featuring free live programming year-round and countless hours of on-demand video, GeForce TV will be your first stop whenever you want to see the latest and hottest racing action. See live Friday Night Excitement Weekly from Washington Speedway and watch the stars of tomorrow make a name for themselves during Thursday night's live micro sprint racing. GeForce TV is also the new home for Rivals Race Chat. Watch weekly as Clinton Jeffrey and Adam Ross discuss all the hot topics in the world of motorsports. For iRacing fans, GeForce TV has you covered with hours of live broadcasting from rivals in GeForce TV racing leagues. GeForce TV promises to deliver motorsports, esports, and action sports you want to see, along with talk shows and vlogs to keep you connected to the lifestyle you love. Visit GeForceTV.net today to subscribe for free. Sit back, hold on, and feel the genes on GeForce TV.